Hello, I'm Joe Lewis. Welcome to this series on deceptive penetration. Basically, that's a strange sounding term, but uh, all actuality, quite often I get asked this question. Mr. Lewis, how can you close the gap against an opponent easier? How can you close that gap faster? Or someone to come up to me and to say, Mr. Lewis, I've got a great side kick, or I've got a great roundhouse kick. But every time I squeeze the trigger to attack my opponent, one of two things happen. I either miss or I get hit. Or someone's got a good technique down and they're having pretty good success with it, either sparring for fun in their class or in competition, but often once in a while they get hit in the process. So today what I'm gonna show you is how to close that gap with a little more ease. How to do it in better control of your opponent. Now, most of my other tapes, I work quite a bit on what we call strategies. Now, today, what we're doing is we're breaking a strategy down and working on what we call individual tactics. Now, we're going to go through a series of different principles. The most important principle in fighting is learning how to position against your opponent. I'll show you how to do that, and then from step by step, in a simple, phase-oriented fashion, I'm going to show you how to improve the speed of one of the easiest most highly recommended tournament techniques, a step through lunge punch. Then I'm gonna show you how to deceptively improve in your initial speed, working on a couple of interesting secret principles, sort of, how to fire the fastest technique in the fight game, the forward hand strike, and then how to blend that into a combination, leading up to showing you how to deal with a counter fighter, and then showing you some more interesting deceptive moves, like uh, what I call broken rhythm angular attacks later on in the tape. All right, the first thing I'd like to do is introduce my first two partners, uh, Mr. Rick Bassetta and Mr. Mike McFarland. All right, gentlemen, can you both positions face in this direction? Now, normally what we like to do is warm up our bodies a little bit. I like to sort of break a sweat a little bit in the beginning, sort of develop your spatial awareness, the space around you. Feel comfortable in a new environment if you're training in a place you're not familiar with. All right, just sort of move around, work as if you're throwing punches and kicks against an imaginary point. Try to stay loose. You're not interested in speed. You just want to get relaxed. Whoa, hold it. My man went down. We got to stop. <laughs> okay, now watch this exercise. Scruff gets me, Rick. First thing we're going to do is work on how to actually throw mechanically a simple step through lunge punch. Now watch me. If this is my opponent, just hold your ground, watch. We're just gonna simply step through, fire the punch, and then back reposition. Okay, now gentlemen, can you come out here please? Face this direction again. Now watch me slowly now. What I want to try to accomplish is, I try to get the hands somewhat to move before the body. As you complete the punch, let your foot come straight through back reposition. Now watch my initial stance. Back up just a little bit. Position. Watch me slowly. When I start to squeeze the trigger, watch my footwork now. I want the feet to sort of come together. Both knees, both feet pointing straight forward. Continue with that motion, sitting down on the punch as I go through. Separate the feet right on the end of the punch. Watch that footwork again a little bit faster. Slowly flowing through, separating my feet on the end of it. This way, at the end of the punch, if I wanted to follow through, I have my body open towards my opponent. It's easier for me to shift my weight from one side to the other as I'm firing. Or, watch this footwork. If I'm gonna stagger step this way, fire I can. Stagger step back, fire. Or fake, fire, fake, fire. Or double fake, fire. Basically, it's gonna look like this. Watch this carefully. Uh, Rick, can you position against me? Now just hold your ground and watch. Slow motion first. As I'm coming through the punch, watch as I complete the punch. Now watch the feet separate. As I strike, the feet will separate from side to side. From here, it's easier for me to shift my weight from side to side. It's easier for me to circle in, circle out. It's easier for me to roll forward, bump, break my opponent's balance. Now let's watch that from the back side. All right, position gets me over here, Rick. Watch my footwork. 
as I start to step through, completing the punch, feet separate. Now watch the footwork as I go from side to side. Stagger step, open, fire, back. Stagger step, open, fire, back. This way I can shift my weight from side to side, keep my opponent off balance. All right. Gentlemen, position, facing this direction. Back it up just a little bit. Let's do a slow motion once. All right, in your set position, keep this in mind. Your face, your solar plexus, and your groin. These are in a straight line that represents the center of your body, so we call it your center line. When you position against your opponent, try to keep that center line as close as possible. In other words, Give your opponent as little target as possible. Also, try not to get your feet too wide because you can't get weight behind the technique. Don't get your feet too narrow because from here, it's hard to move fast in any direction. I picked the width of my stance this way. Watch this carefully. Balancing myself on one leg, bending my knee down as far as I can. I try to see how far out I can reach with my toe without losing my balance. And that basically gives me the width of my stance. Nice, good knee bend, gentlemen. Nice, good knee bend so you're not losing your balance. It's easy to spring from here. All right, position, let's do it slow motion once. Come halfway through the punch, hold it. Look at your knees, both knees sort of bent. Stick the arm all the way out straight. Now as you step through on the punch, watch me first, separate the feet, go. Separate the feet. So this way, if you wanted to, you could follow through with the opposite hand a lot easier. Back reposition. Now let's do it half speed all the way through. Watch me once first. Half speed, punch it, slide up. All right, back reposition, ready? Let's try it, ready? Out. Back reposition. Now let me watch you, let's try it. Ready, Out. Back reposition. Soon as that punch fully extends, pull it right back. This way the hand is in a position to follow through. And when you leave your hand out like this, your hands away from your face, it's easy to be hit here. The elbows away from you. Rib cage, it's easy to be hit downstairs. So as soon as you complete that punch, get it right back, ready to follow through. All right, let's try it this time real fast. All right, position, nice mobile stance. Ready, day! Back reposition. One more time, real fast. Ready, day! Back reposition. It's almost as if when you're firing this punch, watch me. Scruff hits me, Rick. It's almost as if I'm rushing right into a wall. As soon as I hit that wall, I'm gonna stand up. But basically, I wanna sit down on that punch. Whenever I come through, I like to sit down on the punch, keeping the hips directly underneath the shoulders. This way, I have maximum power. When I tilt too much, and the hips are not directly underneath the shoulders, you cannot hit with maximum power this way. Plus, when you bend over like this, it's easier for someone to kick you in the face with a knee. And when you're bent over like this, you're squashing your ribcage you're gonna run out of gas a lot easier. You wanna to try to stay up as much as possible. Okay, now, next step, what I want to do is work on breaking this punch down a little bit. But the first thing, let's do a little relationship exercise. Watch this exercise, scruff this me. Okay, watch carefully what we're doing. First thing, you position against your opponent. In all of these drills today, I want you to think about three steps when you're positioning. Number one, Think about the distance between you and your partner. Number two, take a breath, breathe and relax. Number two, or rather three, try to get centered. What I mean by being centered is, try to pay as close attention to your opponent as possible, almost to the point where you get a sense of when he's gonna move or when he's going to fire, or almost like what he's thinking. Now watch this first relationship drill. Now I have my two partners demonstrated. One side, is going to do a simple step through, lunge punch against the meaty part of your opponent's chest, right up here, upper pectoral muscle, right between the deltoid and the pectoral, right in here where it doesn't hurt. When you hit, instead of hitting with a real tight, closed fist like this, sort of keep the hand semi-relaxed and open, not extended, not too tight. As long as the hand is a, forms a straight 90 degree angle, you can do the damage you're wanting. All right, now watch, scruff gets me. One side is going to lead off, and watch me in slow motion. I'm gonna step through, 
do a simple step to a lunge punch. The opposite side, I want you to position, and I want you to work a simple counter punch. Now as you position against each other, as Mr. Passetta and I are now, take your front hand and just drop it down a little bit to give each other a clear shot at the target region. Now I'm taking this sort of slow here in the beginning because it's sort of delicate. I'm not, I don't want anyone to give too much contact to each other. I only want you to hit your partner hard enough to get their attention. That's it. This is not necessarily a power technique as, as such. It's basically a good, quick lead-off technique to set your opponent up for a follow-up. Now watch. As soon as you see me coming, I want you to squeeze the trigger and stick a counter punch out. What we're going to try to do is see who can hit who first. Basically, the person who's leading off has about an 18 hundredths of a second advantage because when I squeeze the trigger, it's going to take you about a seven to eight hundredths of a second to acknowledge here I come. Then it's going to take you about that much time longer to, re to respond. Got me? That's why I always say in a good fight, try to lead off first. Not necessarily uh, to set the tone of the fight, but basically let the other person know who's the boss and the fact that he's in your territory. All right, position. Now let's try it. So you see me come and try to beat me to the punch with a counter punch. Okay? Good, let's try it again. Now notice the side that's leading has a slight advantage. That's perhaps why this, my side is sort of getting the, the jump on my opponent. Well, let's try it one more time now. Try to relax, watch your opponent, just try to get a sense of when I'm squeezing the trigger and try to beat me to the punch. It's a good, safe exercise. Basically what we're doing here now is trying to get related to each other. Basically he's trying to get a sense of me, I'm trying to get a sense of him. Make sure you're not too close before you squeeze the trigger. You know what too close means? When you stick this front hand out, you're closer than let's say 18 inches away. Notice I'm about 18 inches from his head. This is a good distance. Do not start at two feet away. Look at my footwork, see how far my feet are from his. That's too far. Now look at my hand. Notice my hand is too far from his head. That's too far away. There's no man alive who can penetrate someone who's fast and strike them without missing from here. All right, position. So what we're working on here today is what we call deceptive penetration. I'm gonna show you how to close the distance between you and your opponent a little faster using some forms of deception. This is the hardest thing in the fight game to do. Close that gap between here and my opponent without missing or getting hit. All right, one more time as fast as you can. Ready? Good. All right, now let me bring your partner here. Mike, position. <coughs> now position against each other. <coughs> Adjust the right distance first. Now you will play with different distance lines. In other words, notice how close these gentlemen are now. Now they'll play this exercise from here for a little bit, then you choke back about four inches, choke back about four inches. Now it's a little too far. And then you'd play it from there. Then you might choke back another four inches. And then you play a little bit from there. And once you feel out of control, then you choke back up again, choke back up again, until you find the right, what we call critical distance lines for you. Practice sometimes at close range, practice sometimes at a great range so that you can adjust to any type of an opponent. You might fight someone who's real tall who likes to fight you far away. You might fight somebody who's short and quick who likes to play you close. Be ready to adjust to any type of opponent. All right, position against each other. I want you to lead off and I want you to counter punch. Keep this in mind. Keep the front hand low. Keep it out here to give yourself a sense of balance. Now notice this is just an academic contest here. So then actually when you spar, you keep that hand up. All right, Mike, I want you to lead off a couple times, see if you can beat Rick to the punch. All right, let's try to see what happens. Back reposition. Try to explode now, Mike. Try it again. Good, keep going. <coughs> now watch how they get set before each punch. They're not setting an exact tempo. They're taking the time to get relaxed, to get a sense of their opponent. All right, now let's reverse it. All right, position right where you're at. This time, Rick, you're going to lead off. This time, Mike, you counter punch. All right, let's see what happens. Good, let's try it again. Try to explode now. Side that's firing over here, try to explode as fast as you can. Defensive side, try to relax, get a sense of when your opponent's coming. Now, basically what they're doing is this. Watch this carefully, positioning against each other. Now, Rick, extend your hand out as far as you can. Notice that Mike is out of firing range. Now, 
come back a little bit this way. This is what we call the critical distance line. It's the point at which this opponent over here could be hit. As soon as Rick crosses that critical distance line, that's when he's vulnerable. So in other words, the instant he crosses that critical distance line, see his punch crossing a critical distance line, you should have a counter kick coming out or a counter punch or some type of counter movement. There's basically only two things you can do when you're sparring someone to control them. You either move, basically moving the target, or you can fire. Does everybody understand the timing now? Sure. My back reposition. Let's try it one more time now. Let's try it just a little bit farther away, right? Let's see what kind of control you have at this distance. Okay, let's try it. Good. Let's try it one more time. Good movements. Good movements. Now, let's break this punch down and go through a couple principles which will show you how to close that gap just a little bit faster. Now, watch this closely. All right, position against me. <clears throat> what we're doing now is going through some principles called breakdown. Principle number one, of course, is proper positioning. Whenever you position, think of three things. Distance, number one. Defense, number two. Always give him as little of your center line as possible. And number three, always be as mobile as possible. Look at my footwork and my stance here. I really don't like the word stance because it implies immobility. I like the word position because it implies more factors. I always want to be able to move quickly in any direction. Notice the bend in my knees, I'm not tight, I'm nice and relaxed. I'm not lifting weights, I'm simply trying to be as fast as I can. Notice I can move quickly forward from this position, I can move quickly backward, I can do a stagger step right, or I can do a stagger step left, or any combination of those movements from this particular position. It makes it easy for me to set my opponent up for a leadoff technique, and it makes it easy for me to adjust if he's trying to fire at me. And I can set him up for a counter technique once, so I make him miss. Footwork is very, very important. And a, quite a bit of what we're going to be working on today is showing you how to be explosive, not only upstairs, but also downstairs with your footwork. Remember, footwork is to carry a wave. It's the tool which carries your punches and kicks to your opponent. If you're slow on your feet, you're never going to be able to close that gap quickly or deal with a top right, a top right fighter. All right, now watch position. <clears throat> what we're going to work on now is trying to get as relaxed as we can. And when you relax, take a deep breath. <sighs> Just let all the joints loosen up. Try to get a sense of being on a bed of cotton and almost as if you're floating in, but more with a sensation of your opponent is pulling you towards him rather than you digging in trying to push off. Then, as we're doing that, let's think a little bit about what we call hyperextension. Now watch this sequence of motion as I break it down slowly. With a step through lunge punch. <sighs> Relaxing, I got good proper positioning. Now watch this hyperextension. Number one, I stick my arm out. My arm is fully extended. Number two, I lean forward about four inches. Not too far in excess. I'm losing my balance and setting myself up to be countered over here. It's hard to follow through when you're leaning, plus when you're leaning and lunging as such, it makes it easy for a counter fighter to nail you coming in. So watch it one more time. Extend the arm, step number one. Step number two, lean about four to six inches. This is the sequence of motion now. Watch sequence, step number three. Torque the shoulder and the hip. Watch the shoulder and the hip torque. Step number four, watch my weight shift. Watch my lower knee as I shift my weight forward. Shift my weight forward. Notice how close I am to my opponent and I haven't even started my footwork. Now I'm pushing off with my rear toe as I complete step number five, which is the footwork. Finishing the punch. Watch it all the way through, all five motions. Arm, tilt, torque, shift, step. A little bit faster now. All right, gentlemen, let's try that one. Let's try it facing this direction first. Back here, reposition. All right, ready? Let's do it with me now. Slow motion, extend the arm. Good. Tilt forward about four inches. Just give you a little bit, not off balance now. Torque, notice each time you move, add one of these new movements, you're getting a little more depth in the technique. Step number four, shift your weight forward. Try that again, back. Shift your weight forward, feel that weight shift. 
Step number five, let's complete the step all the way through. Recoil the punch. Good, back reposition. Let's do it a little bit faster this time. All five steps now. Arm, tilt, torque, shift, step. Back reposition. Now half speed slow motion all the way through this time. Just like this, watch. Recoil. Let's try it. Ready? Hey! Back reposition. Looking good. A little bit faster. Ready? Hey! Back reposition. Now in practice, you may want to try to cheat it a little bit. So instead of overextending yourself because uh, you're afraid, hey, that's bad form, I'm going to lose my balance, I'm going to set myself up to get countered, what you might do is cheat it a little bit in practice. So go ahead and hyperextend just a little bit in practice because when you get in a tournament competition, you have to be maybe a little mentally apprehensive and it forces you to sort of feel a little internally congested. And because you've been relaxing and practicing, overextending yourself, it's a little easier to make that adjustment. Because if you practice too tight, you go into a tournament, you might be real tight. Got me? Now let's try it again. Cheat it a little bit this time, just to get the effect of almost like you're trying to exaggerate the hyperextension. Ready? Hey! Back reposition. See, we're not taking pictures here to see what kind of form you have. You're not doing a kata. You're not testing for rank. This is called fighting. The name of the game is who can hit who first. And. I usually like to come out in a fight game and say, okay, if you can't hit me, you can't beat me. If you can't hit me, you can't hurt me. How can you beat me if you can't hit me and hurt me? It's that simple. So basically, I'm using this lead off punch basically to get the man's attention so I can follow through. Watch my left hand. Pow! With my follow up technique. Basically, getting his attention with this touch. So if I want to follow through with a kick, boom, I could come underneath to hit the rib cage with a roundhouse kick if I wanted to. Got me? Or another good street fighting technique I like to use is square off against me, Rick. Looks something like this. I'll get his attention upstairs with the hand. Just lead off punch. Now watch my rear leg. Take my rear leg, bring that shin bone right up behind. Hit that side nerve. This is a ripping kick. Watch the motion. Come up on the leg, it rips up. Sort of comes up. Or sometimes I'll get his attention here and I'll rip down. Watch it rip down. Come up, it comes down. Sort of a ripping motion. For a ripping, tearing type techniques, I like to use those techniques as much as I can. All right, let's try it one more time. Position, face this direction. This time I want you to explode out there as fast as you can. Let's work on the hyper extension. Ready? Good, back reposition. Now, let's add one more ingredient here, all right? We've worked on positioning, we've worked on being relaxed, worked on hyper extension. And whenever you're doing these drills, try to always think of two things. Relaxation is a concept, it's a very abstract concept, and it's very difficult to learn how to relax without a lot of training. And even in my best fight, I can only relax about 25 to 75% of the time. So it's a very impossible thing to do at all times, 100%. But it's a key to endurance. I remember Roberto Duran, famous legendary boxer, said he's got three rules he uses when, he's, when he fights. I said, uh, how is it you can only train three days and go 10, day, 10, uh, 10 rounds? He says, it's very simple. All I do is relax. So relaxation is very, very, very important. Now watch this next exercise. What we're going to work on now is what I call weapon first. It's a little tricky, but it has incredible success. Now let me do this with Mike here. Mike, can you position against me right here? Now all I want you to do is this. Just stand here facing me like such. Okay, turn a little bit more on this angle if you can. Now put your right hand up here like you're getting ready to make a block. Okay, now watch this. Let me take my glove off so they get a clear shot at my hand. Now, I'm going to throw a forward hand strike right here in front of you. I'm not going to make contact. As soon as you see that punch coming, all I want you to do is block it. I want you to work on that block a couple times. Let's see how fast you can block real fast. Go, real fast. Super fast, Pew. real fast. Okay, that's a good block. Right, get your hand up there close. So you've only got to move about four inches. I'm going to try from about four feet away. As soon as you see me coming, block it. Watch this technique carefully. Right, as soon as you see me coming, just block it. Let's try it one more time. Try to concentrate. Right, get your hand up a little higher so you don't have to move quite as far. Good. Let's try it one more time. Let's see what happens here. 
Okay, that's pretty close. Let's try it one more time. We'll make it just a little bit easier for you, all right? Position. I'm gonna get back about six feet this time. So it's a little easier for you. Notice I'm out of kicking range. So I'm definitely out of punching range. All right, so as you see the hand coming, just touch the hand and I'll consider it a block. Watch it carefully. All right, ready? Okay, now, notice if you're a black belt and you're having trouble even touching my hand from six feet away, you would obviously have some trouble trying to block it in competition if you didn't know it was coming or a realistic altercation. Now, let me show you what I was doing, okay? Just relax. This is real important now. Watch it carefully. This is called breakdown. Just come up here in position. Just give me some sort of a target leg to. Most people, when they fire a technique, they do this. They lead with their body. They lead with their body, and then they fire the weapon. Notice my weapon is my hand, not my shoulder. I'm not hitting you with the shoulder. I'm not hitting with you with the head. I'm not hitting you with the hip and, hip, and I'm not hitting you with the foot. So I don't want those parts of my body to move first. I want the weapon to go first, just like in fencing. As a matter of fact, this principle comes from fencing. Uh, the hand or the foil, or the sword, goes first. So you want to follow the weapon in. You don't want to throw your body first, the target first, and then come through with the sword. Wouldn't make sense in sword fighting. It doesn't make sense in sparring either. Watch it one more time now. This is really important. Now this principle is what we call independent motion, or we have another term for it. It's called weapon first. And you can only use this principle three techniques. In a street fight, you can use it with a front kick. But in tournament competition, or for fun sparring in your dojo, or your studio, roundhouse kick, forward hand strike, and step through lunge punch. Today, we're only gonna use it with two techniques, the forward hand strike and the step through lunge punch, which is a technique we just 